Thank you, Matthias, and thank you, Droidcon, for having me. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience, and I'm re really, really excited to be here today. Uh, and welcome to the material world. Uh, my name is uh, Nidhi Shah, and uh, I work for a small uh, startup called CodePath, and, which is based out of San Francisco. Uh, we provide fast-paced, in-person programming classes to experienced programmers. Uh, we teach them how to build mobile apps, uh, iOS and Android. Uh, and we've been really, really fortunate to work with uh, like big Silicon Valley companies like Google, Facebook, Dropbox, Apple, uh, Pinterest, Yahoo, and, and many, many more. Uh, we, we really love everything open source, and our iOS and Android guides are also open source. So uh, if you're a serious Android developer, you should check it out. It's uh, guides.codepath.com slash Android. And if you also want to contribute towards it, uh, they're, they're open source. And we have around 150,000 plus users accessing those guides every month, uh, and around 200 contributors to the guides. So they're almost always up to date as well. So. That's about me. Uh, I would like to know you guys as well. Uh, how many of you are designers here? Oh, quite a few. And uh, can I assume the rest of y'all are developers? I guess no. Uh, how many of you are developers? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of y'all, a lot of us. <laughs> uh, awesome. Welcome, uh, welcome again. So. Uh, before we start, before I even started uh, preparing for this presentation, I asked myself, uh, what impact do I want to have uh, after finishing the presentation? Uh, I cannot promise that you're going to be an expert in material design 20 minutes from now. But what I can uh, promise is that you're going to be an expert in learning uh, new tricks in material design, and uh, you'll just be on the track. You'll have all the resources, all the guides available uh, in order to be an expert in material design if, you, if you're willing to spend the time in it. So these are the three uh, main topics that I want to discuss today uh, as far as material design goes. Uh, first of all, the basic philosophies of material. Uh, why would you use material? What is Google trying to achieve? Uh, by material design. What are various guidelines for color, text, uh, the structure, and the layout uh, of your apps? Uh, also, what are, good, uh, what are the guidelines for motion and interaction, uh, animations and transitions, etc.? So these, these are going to be the three main topics of this presentation, uh, and I, I hope it's, it's useful to you guys. Uh, I think before we actually start talking about material design, it's important to know where we are coming from. Uh, I think we, all of us would agree here that Google has come a long way since the early days when uh, it really struggled to convince the world that its green robot can literally change the world in so many ways that we couldn't even imagine at that time. And uh, especially with Android Lollipop, uh, Android has received its biggest makeover in years. Now with makeover, uh, I mean this. I mean, on the left you see uh, a list view which, which is not standardized. Uh, nothing over there is standardized. There are large buttons on the right side of the screen uh, which look like drop-down buttons, but they don't really drop down anything. Uh, but on the far right, you see a list view where the icon sizes are, cust are, are formalized. The, everything is structured. The, the text size, the, the height of each section, uh, everything is standardized here. It, it just looks much more polished and beautiful. So we, we can easily say that Google has come a long way since its early days of Android. Also, if you give uh, a closer look to the screens, you can also see that the action bar was almost missing in the first screen. It kind of got introduced somewhere in between, and in, in the last screen, it got uh, formalized. Now, it, it tells you what is the size of the action bar, what is the color of the action bar, what it, how it should behave to user interaction. Uh, so just in general, Google is trying to do a better job standardizing things, formalizing uh, the structure of your layouts. So this is the pre-material. These are all of the problems with pre-material. Uh, if you've been an Android user for a while, then you already know that there wasn't much material uh, 
the, there wasn't any structure or unified design aesthetic in Android apps like there was for iOS. Uh, in general, it just offered a lot more flexibility and options within and between apps. So uh, lack of coherent look and feel. Uh, this was especially true across multiple form factors. Uh, just a lack of uh, good guidelines for transitions and animations. Uh, also UI and UX fragmentation, especially across carriers and different manufacturers uh, who try to customize the default Android behavior. So enter material. Uh, in June last year, Google announced material design. And uh, in general, material was just an effort to lay a foundation for a design language uh, that would make the Android platform much more consistent and united. Uh, I just read it, uh, I think, yesterday somewhere. Uh, it said, material design is designing for designing. Did anyone get it? How many, how many designs were there in my last sentence? <laughs> Uh, so it's, it's really as simple as that. It's just standardizing uh, your designs for designing an app. Now, before I dig into the philosophies of material design, uh, let's take a look at material design real, uh, that Google released last year so we can get a visual sense of what it's about. Also, it's after lunchtime, so I feel uh, a video would help here. partially worked. <laughs> I hope everyone is awake now. <laughs> so it was, I think, one of the wow moments, right? When uh, I'm sure a lot of us have already seen that video by now. But when I first saw it, I was like, wow. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the emotion I expect to see when I show my app to anybody for the first time. There has to be at least a couple of animations, a couple of things that, that you know, make that uh, wow feeling happen. So uh, the reason I want to get into the philosophies of material design instead of just jumping straight into the specs and giving you practical tips on uh, you know, what material design is and how we can use it, I think it's really important to understand uh, where a platform is coming from to see where it's going. Uh, this is just a foundation that Google is trying to lay. This is, this is not the end goal. So there is a lot of material design jargon to skim through, but in short, material is uh, just a digital fabric uh, made of pixels, uh, if that makes sense. Google is also using the analogy of paper and ink to describe material. So every element that you see on your screen uh, depicts a material. Everything, every button, every view that you place on top of each other, they all uh, depict a material. Either it's, a circular sh it's in circular shape or rectangular shape or square shape. Uh, and they all have shadows. Now, user can tap, swipe, or pinch this material fabric, and it will move according to user interaction. It will behave the same way as a normal material would. Uh, I mean, just for example, if you take a silk cloth or just, just any material uh, for that reason. Uh, Google also encourages to use really bold colors and graphic layouts. and uh, really uh, meaningful motion as well. So these are the founding factors of material design. Uh, just material, uh, it has to be bold and graphic, and uh, the motion should provide meaning. It should come from the real world objects. So just to reiterate, uh, material is just a hypothetical material. You're not really laying a sheet of paper on top of each other. Uh, so all the UI elements are treated as materials. And just like any other uh, material, like a piece of your paper, material also has realistic physical properties. Uh, it casts shadows, and it has elevation. And uh, 
these guidelines provide a unified design language for all Android experiences. And uh, Google really wants to uh, take this further and just keep this experience, uh, keep improving this experience. Uh, here are some rules uh, that define material design. Uh, so if you if you see here in in this. Uh, in this video, uh, know that the shadows cast the real-time soft shadows uh, that approximate global illumination. And this is a really, really hard problem uh, when it comes to computer graphic. So this is, this is a huge deal in computer graphic. Similarly, uh, another rule states that material cannot overlap. Uh, you, you can see that if material is uh, put on top of another material, it casts shadow. Uh, and the elevation should change depending on the level of that material uh, or the element that you've placed into a view group. Uh, it also says that materials have different elevations. Uh, we just talked about it. Uh, in, in the second image, you can see that if materials are put on top of each other, there is a floating action button, there are uh, three, four different views, uh, and every view will have a different uh, soft shadow based on its elevation. And these, these are very subtle things, uh, and as engineers, we don't really think about them as much, but they all add to the overall user experience and uh, the UI of, the, of your app. It also says that material can split, combine, and reshape. So as you can see, it can split, uh, and it can also combine with another material. This is especially applicable when it comes to animation. When you're transitioning from one screen to the other, your material can split, it can combine with other views, uh, going from one activity to the other. Uh, the only thing that remains constant is the, is the height uh, of elevation. It's, it is always one dp. Now, this was about what. What was material and you know, what it is supposed to do, what are the rules? Uh, you would ask, I mean, this is the next logical question. Why would you use material, right? Uh, so I don't know how many of you saw the uh, Google I.O. this year, but uh, Google announced that around 200K plus uh, apps are material apps in the Play Store today. And uh, since they announced material design last year, 40 plus, 40 plus percentage of apps which were released in the Play Store um, use material design. Uh, and if you, if, if you actually don't count games out of it, uh, then more than one out of every three app is material design, uh, which, is, which is a really huge number considering it hasn't even been a year since uh, material design has been out. So uh, just to recap, material is a digital fabric uh, made with pixels. Material casts shadows, and it has elevation. Uh, material is depicted in, in a 3D model. Uh, so it has x, y, and z index, where z index uh, actually depicts the elevation. And material can split, combine, and reshape. Another thing that we should worry about is uh, color, text, and layout of our apps. So I think that's probably uh, one of the most uh, overlooked features, especially if you're a developer and you, know, you don't have a designer on your team. We, we don't really care about uh, typography or uh, the color scheme of our apps. Uh, not not uh, every developer is that way, but most, uh, most engineers uh, lack that kind of a design expertise. So Material really, really recommends the use of bold colors, really vibrant colors in your app. And it, it takes this inspiration from contemporary architecture, uh, from like road signs or even uh, athletic codes. Now, uh, one thing that you should know, know about color is that color should be unexpected and it should be vibrant. I mean, if there is any one thing that you should know about uh, color in your app, it should be this. And to make this possible, Google also came out with the Palette API. Now, uh, Palette comprises of primary colors and accent colors. So you can define all of these colors in your styles.xml file. Uh, I have purposely not added uh, code blocks here because it's kind of 
hard to read through it. Uh, it was really painful to make that decision as an engineer uh, because that's that's the one thing that I uh, I really look forward to. But uh, I I mean it was just easy to talk about code and not talk about the design aesthetics. But uh, I I'll share the guides with you later so you can have a look at that. But uh, this is about the the color palette. Uh, and it's really easy. All you have to do is uh, just say color and get vibrant color, uh, palette dot get vibrant color. It's as simple as that. It, it, you provide it a bitmap, and it, it picks the most uh, prominent color from the bitmap, and it returns you the RGB value. These are some of the examples of beautiful apps made possible only with the use of palette. And these are different APIs of which are available through uh, palette. So you can see you can get the vibrant uh, swatch, you can get the dark, dark vibrant swatch, muted swatch. There are six different uh, methods which are available through the palette API. Uh, typography is another important aspect uh, of any app, actually, not just material design. and. Uh, the two standard typefaces available in material design, uh, Roboto and Noro. Uh, so I think we all know this, but we kind of overlook this uh, when we design our apps. Roboto is mainly used for English and English-like languages, whereas uh, Noro is used for all the other languages, Middle Eastern and uh, Southeast Asian languages. And Google also provides size and style guidelines to balance uh, content delivery and reading comfort. So uh, if you go to the design guidelines uh, on Google's website, uh, they have a lot of uh, different sizes and uh, style guidelines that you can refer to. Depending on what type of app you're building, if, you, if you're building a news reading app, uh, you really care about the reading comfort. Uh, and yeah, it, it depends on your use case. Uh, but uh, be careful, avoid, avoid using too many sizes because it can obviously be distracting to users' eyes. Uh, this was probably the most discussed uh, item from material design, the floating action button. Uh, it, it actually represents a, a circular sheet of paper on top of all the other view elements. And uh, it it's used to represent a single promoted action. So if there is any primary action that you want your users to perform, uh, it has to be done using a floating action button, or at least Google recommends it that way. Uh, as with everything else, Google also recommends a dimension from this floating action button. Uh, it has to be placed in the bottom right corner of the screen. Uh, it has to have margin of 16 dB for phones and 24 dB for for uh, tablets, and you can also attach it to list views, recycler views, uh, and any other scroll view for that matter. Uh, these are just some of the examples of beautiful apps using a uh, floating action button. You can see there's a calendar app, uh, which is used to just, you can just click on the plus button, the floating action button, and it brings up uh, the, the event view, where you can create a new event. Uh, Again, just like everything else, don't overdo it. Not every screen uses fab, uh, needs fab. Only if uh, a screen has a primary function, uh, that is the only use case where you need fab. Uh, you can make an educated decision on whether you need a floating action button or a normal action button with uh, elevation or just a flat button, depending on your use case. So just to recap, Use palette to develop your brand colors. Uh, use palette as much as, much as you can. Uh, use dynamic type for best uh, UX. And uh, use fab per screen only if it is necessary. Uh, this is probably my favorite topic, uh, motion and interactions. So if you see the graph here, uh, I'm sure everybody has seen this before, but uh, it just depicts a symmetric and asymmetric motion. And if you think about the physical world, if you think about real world objects, uh, you have to apply force in order for an object 
uh, to move. And the strength and duration of these forces dictate how quickly an object accelerates and decelerates, or even changes direction, right? So uh, it, it really depends. The, the object doesn't really start or stop uh, immediately. It takes a while for it to start, uh, it, then it's in motion, and then it stops. So it's kind of asymmetric. It's not really symmetric. And your transition should depict the same behavior as real motions. That is the idea that material design is trying to bring in. And if, if you just uh, have the symmetric animations, they kind of look mechanical, uh, and they don't really depict the real world motion. So it's it just good to know these fundamentals, uh, because when you're trying to implement animations in your own apps, uh, you can see what is working and what is not working from the user's perspective. Again, these are very subtle changes. Uh, nobody will complain about it if your transitions are not asymmetric. But your mind kind of sees it, and everything adds to the overall UX uh, user experience of your app. The next big thing is a uh, ripple effect. Uh, in material design, apps are responsive to user input. Uh, it's it's pretty clever, actually. Upon in, uh, input event, the system provides instant virtual confirmation uh, from the point of your contact. So wherever you touch the screen, uh, the ripple will start from that point. And it's this is called a touch ripple. Add clarity as much as possible. Uh, give feedback to your users uh, and add ripples to all the things. Transitioning between two screens. Uh, this has always been uh, questionable and uh, a major point of discussion uh, between designers and engineers. Uh, this was possible in iOS for a long time now, but uh, with material design, now you can also do it in Android. Uh, unfortunately, all the animations are not backward compatible. You need Lollipop uh, API 21 plus uh, for all the animations to run, but all the widgets are backward compatible. Now, transitioning between two screens, uh, it should be really clear, uh, smooth, and effortless, uh, just like the, the graph that we saw earlier. And, uh, it's really important because a well-designed transition tells the user where to focus their attention. So what uh, we're trying to do here is that you have two shared elements between two activities, and you're trying to animate just the shared elements, not the entire view group, not the entire activity. And this is the example of a shared element transition. See how beautiful that is? Again, I'll share the guides later so you can know how we can achieve all of this with just simple steps. Be careful with shared element transitions because you don't want to be doing shared element transition across 20 different elements on your screen. Uh, you might want to just share one view group with multiple elements. Uh, it can just be an icon that you want to transition, or it can be a view group. But uh, if there are multiple elements that you're transitioning between two screens, it can be jarring, and the experience will not be as great. Circular wheel, another really beautiful transition. It's mainly used to just make some items visible or invisible. It's as simple as that. So just to repeat again, uh, you got to love ripples. Uh, add ripples to your app as much as you can. Provide visual feedback to your users. Provide visual continuity by implementing the shared element transitions, or also called as hero transitions. And uh, use circular reveal if it uh, suits your design. So just to summarize, uh, we kind of ran over time. But uh, again, we set out to learn about three things. What is material, the philosophies behind material design, uh, why we should use bold colors and graphical colors, and where they come from, what is the inspiration behind it, what is fab, and uh, why you should use meaningful motion in your animations and transitions in your apps. And 
just focus uh, users' attention to the main things on the screen and not the entire activity and all the items in the view group. So I, I hope with that uh, I achieved my goal. Uh, do you guys feel like at least you are on the track of understanding material design and you'll go back and read the design documents and uh, try to add more polish to your apps? Uh, even if it's, I know it's not required, it's a hard decision. We are always busy uh, with a lot of other things, but uh, these little things make a lot of difference, trust me. Uh, this is the URL for uh, the guides, guides.codepart.com. Uh, you should probably bookmark it. Uh, it's, uh, we, we use these tools and uh, these guides to train uh, engineers at Facebook and uh, Google and all the other companies. And uh, they are really great resources. Uh, if you are learning Android development or you are already an experienced Android developer. So uh, I think thank you so much. I, uh, I hope you guys at least got the philosophies around material design. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'll be around. Uh, I think we ran over time, so I won't take questions here, but I'll, I'll be downstairs. Uh, or just come and say hi, even if you don't have questions. Thank you so much. Thank you.